Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank organizers for uh, invitation to speak at this string conference. And uh, uh, my talk today is based on uh, my recent paper with Jeremy Gomez and Takuya Akuda on uh, localization for truth loops and uh, my past work on localization for Wilson loop operators in four-dimensional gauge theories. So uh, I'll start from basic. Uh, given uh, a contour C in the space-time, one can define a Wilson loop operator as a gauge invariant observable associated to holonomy of, um, of a gauge field around uh, a contour. And uh, uh, this uh, operator measures a response uh, to an electrical field, uh, sorry, to an electrical charge moving around this contour. So electrical charge creates an electric field which decays as one over R squared. And now, uh, since, uh, well, the ancient times of Maxwell, we know about uh, electric magnetic duality, we can uh, swap uh, electric and magnetic field as well as electric and magnetic charges. So uh, uh, on the dual side, uh, the dual image of the Wilson loop operator becomes what is called the Truft loop operator. So uh, in this operator, uh, it measures a response to a magnetic charge which moves around the contour C, so that uh, it creates a, a magnetic field decaying as one over R squared. And uh, in the Billing theory, in U1 theory, it is simply characterized by integer m, which uh, measures uh, a flux of the magnetic field around the two sphere, which is linked with the given contour C. Uh, so under the electromagnetic duality, the uh, integer charge of electric uh, operator maps to that integer charge of magnetic operator. In the case of abelian theory, it's uh, very elementary because the path integral is Gaussian and uh, one can simply uh, uh, make transformation uh, with the uh, integration variables and see that uh, this is exact duality in uh, quantum theory. Now, the situation becomes uh, very non-trivial for non-abelian theories. And uh, the simplest case that we have in mind is uh, n equals 4 supersymmetric Young Mills. So uh, uh, it's easy to present uh, when the gauge group is uh, simply laced, like uh, ADE theories. And in this case, if you combine the gauge coupling constant and theta parameter into a complexified uh, coupling constant tau, then uh, the duality uh, plus uh, periodicity in the shifts of the theta parameter uh, gives us together a so to z symmetry. So this is a modular group. And uh, uh, why modular group? Well, from string theory perspective, you know, we now know the answer. And it was uh, reviewed in many of the talks in this uh, conference. Uh, uh, Greg Moore gave a very a nice review of the uh, 2,0 series in six-dimensional. And uh, this is one of the simplest compactification of uh, such theory if you, if you consider it uh, on a two-dimensional or even surface just on, of genus one of, on an elliptic curve with modulus tau. Then uh, after compactification in four-dimensional space-time, uh, we get n equals four supersymmetrical young mills with covering tau. And that uh, duality plays uh, a major uh, uh, role in many questions of uh, physical um, mathematics now. So uh, if we take more complicated uh, geometry like uh, arbitrary curve with uh, uh, many punctures, then uh, as uh, uh, Greg Moore has reviewed, we get n equals two supersymmetrical uh, field theories in four dimensions, and again, duality transformations, electromagnetic duality transformations in that uh, four dimensional theory are related to different uh, pens decomposition, how you glue those uh, triunions in that uh, curve. So, uh, that's a very uh, nice geometrical picture. What we'd like to do is to uh, actually uh, make some uh, precise. Uh, computation and test uh, the duality at least in some simplest uh, situation. So uh, uh, to set the problem more uh, precisely, uh, uh, I'll introduce notations. So, Wilson, so if you take uh, a gauge group G, uh, then Wilson loop is characterized by, described by contour C in the space time and our representation R of G, and we call that operator w, WR. Uh, the dual side 
is a magnetic operator hoof loop. Now, the dual uh, group to the electrical group is called Lagrange's uh, dual, and it is obtained uh, normally by replacing all roots by core roots and uh, weight latches by core weight latches. As uh, well as we know, integer, as we know that uh, electric charges are parameter, uh, take value in the weight latches of the gauge group, magnetic charges take value in the core weight uh, latches of the gauge group. So, uh, so we want to. Uh, consider two dual theories, uh, take the same contour, uh, take the operator which is due to the Wilson loop operator, this pair, and uh, compute uh, expectation values of uh, both of these operators in these theories and uh, see if they uh, match to each other. Well, uh, here's the trick. Uh, the, uh, the electromagnetic duality is a complicated weak strong duality, so it maps a weak coupling constant to a strong uh, 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 coupling constant. And therefore, uh, all methods which rely just on perturbation theory uh, will not work. We need something uh, more powerful. We need something to go into the domain of strong coupling constant and uh, still be able to get exact results there. So we want uh, exact computation. Now, uh, the way to do an exact computation uh, is uh, called, uh, in, in certain setups, we can apply what is called localization principle, and it uh, dates back to the works of uh, these people. Uh, uh, it was mentioned many times in this conference again, but I'll just give, uh, again, a very uh, a brief review of that. So the idea, uh, we want to compute uh, the integral uh, with the action which is invariant under certain fermionic symmetry, and that fermionic symmetry, in our case, uh, and uh, often when it's uh, good to compute such integrals, squares the bosonic symmetry, which acts ni nicely on the theory. In particular, it has some fixed points. So, uh, in this situation, we can deform the action by adding a Q exact piece uh, to the original action with some parameter t. And uh, then assuming that uh, that uh, a combination uh, anti-commutator between Q and V is positive definite, we can consider that uh, path integral and uh, send uh, T to infinity. So when you send T to infinity, the path integral is dominated by just by contribution from this term, and therefore the path integral localizes to the zeros of uh, this term. So uh, on the other hand, you can integrate by parts the differential of z over t and see that uh, the result is, in fact, an invariant of t. So, therefore, that complicated nonlinear uh, partition function can be simply computed by taking the integral. Well, the integral itself might be nonlinear, but uh, over zeros of that uh, QV functional. But the integration in all normal directions to QV functional is just a one loop uh, Gaussian integral. So conceptually, uh, what happens, the infinite dimensional integral over the space of all fields, which is denoted by x here, uh, reduces to the integration over some, in lucky cases, uh, finite dimensional manifold, which I called y alpha, which parameterizes the points in the solutions to the equations to the uh, uh, zeros of this uh, functional. Now, it's convenient often to uh, take that functional in the form uh, keep psi bar comma psi be linear in the fermions where psi are all fermions of the theory. And in this case, you can see that uh, QV is just absolute value of keep psi squared. Therefore, the zeros of uh, QV are the zeros of keep psi. So we need to uh, find supersymmetric configurations of the theory by solving the equations keep psi equals zero and uh, then integrate over those configurations with that uh, determinant uh, obtained from, from here. So uh, I prepared a couple of slides with a very simple exercise uh, to show how localization works in the simplest example of integration of a certain uh, functional and two-dimensional sphere, but I don't have time to go in details over there. You, 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 uh, for those of who see localization for the first time can refer to that uh, slide for the introduction later. Now, uh, so uh, 
let, let me go to the setup of the problem we actually do. Uh, so we consider what is called now uh, n equals two supersymmetry theories on uh, four-dimensional sphere. Those theories have uh, eight supercharges. And uh, yesterday, uh, Cyberg uh, gave a very nice review which puts those uh, theories in the framework of general picture uh, of supersymmetry on rigid supersymmetry on curved spaces. Now, here, uh, what we actually have is a four sphere. The supersymmetric group is OSP2 slash 4. So the SP, SP slash 4 component, which is uh, uh, equivalent to SO5, its isometry of uh, S4 generates all possible rotations of S4. The SO2 is a subgroup uh, of what would be the usual SU2R symmetry in four dimensional space time. So it rotates supercharges and uh, uh, fermions. It doesn't uh, touch actually the two scalars in the vector multiplet. So uh, with that series, that would be uh, the action on a round four sphere. And the reason I've written it down is to point an important uh, feature here the scalar field is coupled to the curvature of the four-dimensional sphere. And therefore, the usual uh, Coulomb moduli, which we have uh, in four-dimensional space-time, are, are lifted in the theory on the fourth sphere. So there, there are no moduli. Uh, all fields are massive, gauge fields, uh, scalars, uh, and fermions are massive. And we can actually integrate over the all uh, fields in the theory and find the partition function, which is just a number. I mean, a function of a coupling constants here, maybe masses of hypermultiplets. In addition, when we introduce uh, Wilson and Hooft loop operators, well, then we get expectation value for those operators. Uh, to do localization, we need to choose a supercharge, a uh, convenient supercharge. And uh, we take that supercharge is parameterized by a uh, uh, conformal killing spinner on S4. We can take it in, uh, no, uh, let me just uh, say that uh, generally, given that the uh, OSP is the 2 slash 4 supergroup, uh, supercharge Q can square to a space time rotation, uh, an element of that OSO5, to R symmetry transformation of that uh, O2 group, and some gauge transformation. Now, SO5 is a group of rank 2, so generally uh, the transformation is parameterized by two parameters, which we call. Uh, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, uh, there necessarily would be uh, a fixed point of the transformation in case if uh, epsilon is non zero, that would be just uh, two fixed points, which we would call a north pole and the south pole. And uh, then the transformation generated by Q squared is just a rotation of the four sphere, which keeps uh, those two points uh, fixed. And if we look on that uh, transformation around the north pole, uh, that would be a rotation of the tangent of uh, R4. We'll relate uh, later uh, that to the theory in the omega background, in uh, which case the parameterization is just the angular velocities of the rotation in the 1, 2 plane and 3, uh, 4 plane. So uh, in uh, our geometry, where it relates to the geometry of theories in omega background by uh, setting epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 equal to the inverse radius of the uh, four sphere. So now uh, the Wilson and uh, Hooft loop operators are placed on the equator of the uh, four sphere. The definition of the supersymmetric Wilson loop operators is uh, very uh, conventional. Uh, we just add uh, a coupling to one of the scalar fields in the uh, uh, vector multiplet and integrate over that uh, contour in the equator. And uh, those loops uh, were famously uh, studied uh, uh, long ago in N equals 4 supersymmetric young mills and ideas safety uh, context, uh, starting from work of uh, uh, these people. In particular, it was uh, uh, back in 2000, it was conjectured that uh, such uh, Wilson loop operator can be computed exactly by a uh, matrix model, but uh, it was not uh, clear how actually one gets uh, that matrix model until uh, this uh, recent work on uh, uh, localization. Now, for a uh, supersymmetric hoof loop, uh, the definition is uh, uh, slightly uh, 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 different. 
in a style because uh, you, you see Wilson loop operator is an order operator, so you describe it by inserting a functional of the fields in the path integral and integrating over the same space of fields. Instead, a uh, truth loop operator is a disorder operator, so uh, it is described by uh, modifying the space of fields over which we integrate. Uh, so uh, we know that um, to, uh, to define truth loop operator, we say that the gauge fields and uh, well and scalar fields, which is uh, which goes in pair with the uh, gauge field, uh, have a certain singularity around uh, the loop. So if you take transversal three-dimensional space uh, to any point on the contour and consider local behavior of the fields, then the truth loop operator is defined by saying that the uh, curvature, that the connection has a curvature which goes as inverse over uh, x squared and is parameterized by some uh, element of the uh, Lie algebra, which in fact is, uh, must be quantized. It is integer, it is uh, weight of the dual of the dual Lie algebra of the gauge group. And uh, the scalar fields, uh, 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 which uh, here is called uh, finite, goes also uh, in inversely to the distance from the loop. Uh, this configuration is uh, like BPS configuration, which satisfies boga molin equation D a finite equals uh, star uh, F. <clears throat> so these results are, sorry, uh, these operators uh, preserve uh, more than just uh, that one supercharge Q, which I introduced in the uh, previous slide. Uh, they, they actually have BPS operators, maximum supersymmetric operators, but we don't need that for localization. We will use just uh, the fact that they are invariant under the supercharge on the uh, single supercharge Q I described. So uh, here's the plan to localize. We need to find the localization locus, that is to solve the equations q psi equals zero. Uh, then we need to compute the restriction of the action to that supersymmetric configuration. Then we need to compute the determinant of the fluctuations in the normal directions. And, and then we need to integrate over the, local, of the space of supersymmetric configurations and uh, some of our different components. All right. Now, the first step to find the supersymmetric configurations. And here we've got uh, some unusual uh, differential equations to solve. Well, the equations are obtained just from the transformations of the fermions. So s schematically, that's uh, cube psi uh, uh, is given by uh, that functional, which involves the curvature of the gauge fields and some uh, scalar fields, and this Ki are auxiliary fields. Well, if you actually uh, write down those equations explicitly for our choice of supercharge on the fourth sphere, it turns out that the equations uh, are very interesting. They interpolate between uh, three types of equations which appear in mathematical physics in different uh, contexts. Uh, at the North Pole, the equations, simply the instanton equations, F plus equals zero. And the South Pole, those equations, F minus equals zero. And in between, there are some complicated x-dependent equations. In the equator, they become, again, something familiar. There are the equations of uh, Bogomolny type. It's uh, uh, the equations in three-dimensional space transversal to that uh, U1 orbit of the Q square rotation is just Bogomolny equation, well, plus some uh, condition for invariance in this rotation. I don't present explicit form of the equations because it's not very illuminating, but uh, here's the picture you try to, uh, to keep. Now, the claim is that the only smooth solution of these equations this so-called vanishing theorem that we were able to show is given by this simple configuration. So all fields uh, are set to their classical uh, values in the background of the uh, Wilson and Hooft uh, operator, except that uh, one of the scalar fields, that scalar fields which couples the Wilson loop operator, is allowed to be shifted by any uh, constant uh, num uh, number by zero mode, which doesn't depend on a point on a fourth sphere, 
and as well as one of the auxiliary fields. So the integration, the infinite dimensional path integral, will be reduced on this component uh, y0 to the finite dimensional integral just over the Cartan algebra, over the, uh, uh, over the gauge algebra. So that would be uh, a hint that uh, we are getting a matrix model uh, for n equals 4 theory, but in fact it's a matrix model for uh, more complicated n equals 2 theories. So uh, that's, uh, that's the summary of what I've just said. And uh, that uh, smooth configuration with just uh, uh, background fields shifted by zero modes, it accounts for all perturbative corrections to the theory. So if we uh, finish uh, our program for the, just that one component, we get ex exact result in uh, perturbation theory for coupling constant. If you, and later I'll tell what other components of supersymmetric configurations, and they would give us non-perturbative corrections. So uh, the step two is to compute the restriction of the action to the supersymmetric configurations. It's a very uh, simple step, just integrate uh, those uh, values of fields over the fourth sphere, uh, but the result is very inspiring. So what we get, we get that functional, but then we can uh, decompose it into the sum of two terms, which have uh, a nice interpretation. So that's uh, the sum of uh, squares of the variable, which I call a, a squared at the north pole and a squared at the south pole, and that uh, variable a is uh, the variable uh, the variable a hat is the variable a which parameterizes the zero mode of the field phi zero, shifted by uh, plus or minus the charge of the magnetic uh, operator, if you insert magnetic operator. And this uh, variable a hat is precisely the value of uh, the parameter for the gauge transformation appearing in the uh, operator q squared. So if uh, we continue that uh, localization uh, uh, program to find uh, the determinant of the one-loop fluctuations, we will uh, need to use the weights of the Q squared at the north and the south pole. And here we see that uh, uh, they're just related to the shifts by magnetic, uh, uh, by, by magnetic parameter of uh, that parameter over which we integrate in the matrix integral. So uh, the classical, then the classical contribution coming from the evaluation of that uh, action on the uh, supersymmetric configuration of the smooth one is uh, absolute value squared of just this, uh, this Gaussian. And we'll see later that it's in fact, uh, uh, it has interpretation as a partition, as a classical part of partition function theory in omega background. Now. Uh, step, uh, the next step is to compute the uh, one-loop uh, determinant for the fluctuations. And here, uh, we need to relate to the theory of indices for transversal elliptic uh, operators by I.T. and Singer. Uh, the reason is that those funny equations that uh, we've got from cube psi equals zero, which interpolates between this, and uh, between F plus equals zero, Bogomolin equations, and F minus equals zero, uh, the linearized uh, form of these equations, which you need to compute the, those determinants, they involve an uh, operator which is not elliptic, but which is transversally elliptic with respect to rotations of the fourth sphere generated by Q squared. So uh, we need to compute the ratio of the determinants uh, of the uh, transformation Q squared restricted to the subspaces uh, co-kernel and kernel of the differential operator, and we can do that uh, using uh, Atiyah Singer theory for indices of differential, of transversal elliptic differential operators. Uh, that's uh, how it works, uh, just if we uh, can compute the index, which is the difference of traces on the kernel and co-kernel, we can extract the weights of the R action on the operator, and then can just transform that uh, index uh, to the determinant uh, by this uh, uh, rule. So, uh, so, 
So to find uh, the index of the transversal differential operator, uh, we cut uh, the sphere, the, four, uh, the S4, into three pieces, into the neighborhood of the North Pole, equator, and the South Pole. So the reason is that uh, the index formula is additive with respect to slicing the manifold into pieces, and on each of those pieces we can uh, use a simple formula to compute the index because the North Pole and the South Pole they uh, just uh, they they equivalent to R4 with a fixed point uh, it's the origin uh, and we need also equate uh, the, uh, the region near equator because there the operator uh, fails to be elliptic it is transverse elliptic but the region near the equator it has a free action of the uh, our symmetry group, so again, uh, uh, taking the quotient by that uh, uh, U1 action, you can reduce the region near equator to just uh, a three manifold uh, times uh, S1, and uh, then again, the computation for the index is simple. So uh, the result which we get after computing the index and then transforming the index into the determinant is given by uh, this formula which involves the special function, uh, Barnes G function, it was introduced by Barnes in uh, 1899. In fact, it's now a very uh, no, well-known and studied uh, special function. You can uh, 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 review uh, Morozov's talk to see in what corner of uh, other special functions uh, this uh, function uh, occupies. Uh, it's related to quantum dialogue and many other interesting functions. So. Uh, that's uh, the contribution from each of the pole. And you see that the argument of that uh, function is uh, a shifted uh, parameter over which we integrate finally in the matrix model. It is shifted by the values of, of B, of that uh, strength for the hoof loop, if we have a hoof loop operator. The equator region uh, computation gives a simple correction like a product of signs. Uh, so uh, the arguments of uh, those functions, well, those are the parameters A in, over which we integrate, and in addition, the parameters of Lagrangians like uh, the masses, the hypermultiplets in the theory, if you consider the theory with hypermultiplets. So this formula is uh, uh, as general as uh, uh, as general as the general Lagrangian descriptions of n equals two theories. So given uh, a theory with Lagrangian, we can actually, we can easily uh, write down this uh, contribution. It depends just uh, on the re representation uh, for hypermultiples for the gauge group and uh, involves involves uh, weights and uh, roots of the gauge group. So uh, for any such theory, the uh, one loop. Uh, computation can be done exactly, and but that one-loop computation in the localization framework includes all perturbative corrections, actually, in, for the original integral. So even if we just uh, stay with that formula, uh, we'll get the result which is exact, and in the perturbation theory, it includes all corrections in uh, coupling constant. Uh, if, we, if you want to do something... Uh, more complicated, like non-perturbative corrections, we need to do uh, more work, which I'll tell you later. But uh, at this moment, we already can write down what is the uh, contribution of that smooth uh, supersymmetric configuration. And it has a very nice connection with Nikrasov's uh, partition function of gauge theory in the omega background. In fact, what we get essentially is just integration of the absolute value of Nikrasov's partition function squared over that Coulomb parameter A, in the case when we insert hoof loop operator, that parameter A is shifted by the strength of the loop B. In the case when we insert Wilson loop operator, we multiply that uh, measure under the path integral by the character describing that Wilson loop operator. And here already you can see how electromagnetic duality, how S duality uh, emerges. So this A and this A are dual in the sense of uh, dual variables in the sense of Fourier transformation, and uh, that exponent uh, under Fourier transformation becomes sort of shift operator, and so you you you, you can expect that actually that type of result can uh, have um, 
can, can have precise meaning under as duality. But, uh, well, the, the exact relation to Nicolas's partition function goes under that substitution which I uh, mentioned before. The parameters epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, which measure angular velocities in the 1, 2, and 3, 4 plane, are set to the inverse radius of the fourth sphere, and uh, everything else is uh, mapped uh, like 1 to 1. So, non perturbative corrections. Well, non perturbative corrections, we have to study other solutions of keep psi equals zero. And uh, we figured out that uh, it's not enough to just include smooth contributions. In fact, when, we, in fact, when, our, when our equations uh, behave like f plus equals zero just at the North Pole, we might imagine that there are solutions which are point like instantons localized at the north point uh, at the north pole and contributing uh, the usual uh, instanton uh, factor uh, to the integral and the same goes with the south pole so the regions uh, around the north pole and around the, the south pole they are each like a copy of theory in the omega background and localization uh, near these regions works in the same way uh, when we have the theory with, with a defect with a Tooft operator inserted on the equator, then there are also an additional contributions from uh, point monopoles which get condensed to the equator. I'll uh, tell more precisely later about those. But uh, for point instantons which sit at the North Pole and the South Pole, the situation is uh, sort of very simple now. So four sphere relates to the theory in omega background with uh, the values uh, of epsilon set to 1 over r, in the same way like, uh, like a circle relates to parabola, that's uh, the same series up to the O of, uh, o of uh, x squared terms if you expand in the distance from the origin. So like, uh, th there is some change of variable uh, involved, but Lagrangians and supersymmetric uh, transformations coincide in uh, these uh, theories up to those terms. Now, since localization uh, uh, restricts uh, uh, to contributions from, from configurations which are supported just at x equals zero, we get that uh, the contributions are the same. Therefore, point instantons uh, at x equals zero contribute in the same way in these two theories. So we can just borrow the result from the uh, theory in omega background, and then uh, that's uh, the final formula up to monopole uh, corrections in the Tooft loop, uh, sorry, in the situation when we have a Tooft loop operator. This final formula is just uh, now the absolute value square of the Nicolas's partition function, shifted by the magnetic uh, uh, parameter B in the case for Tooft loop, and the case for Wilson loop is uh, the same. And Z is a function obtained by uh, combination of that perturbative piece and instanton uh, partition function. And if B is a minuscule representation, that is, if it can't be screened by monopole uh, sitting uh, around the equator, this is the final result. So like you can take, for example, uh, N equals uh, to star uh, theory, fundamental representation, and uh, check that uh, these two integrals are dual to each other by Fourier transform. Now, now here is uh, a more interesting uh, uh, situation, some, something new. If uh, we consider representations uh, which have higher weights than just fundamental representations, say for UN group, we know that uh, such Tooft loops can be screened, can be screened by non-abelian monopoles. Uh, what I mean by this? So let's say that uh, we consider the problem in that the transversal R3 to, to, to the loop, and then uh, the Tooft loop is characterized by the asymptotics of fields in the region where x goes to zero, uh, by this equation, so that phi goes as b over 2x, where b is a parameter of the Tooft loop near x equals zero. But then we have uh, near the loop equations look like Bogomolin equations, d phi equals uh, star f, 
And we know that uh, these equations can have some non-trivial solutions which behave roughly as a billion solution with this parameter when x goes to zero, but with another parameter, b prime, which I call b prime, which is smaller than b by some uh, core root amount of g when x goes to infinity. So uh, in, the, in between two regions, x zero and x infinity, some, the, equation, uh, the solution is some complicated uh, non-abelian uh, configuration, which is symbolic, eh? which is drawn like, like this. So uh, if you want to include those monopole uh, corrections, we need to localize on uh, the modular space of these non-abelian monopoles with parameters b and b prime and sum over all possible b primes. Uh, that uh, dual, dual of this uh, would be the fact that in the formula for the Wilson loop operator, here, uh, if we take a representation, so let's say this is trace, it's emitted R here, but it's trace into representation R, and if representation R is specified by uh, a weight uh, higher than just fundamental representation, you have uh, different weights appearing here, if you, even if you take like n plus four theory and the classical Gaussian measure and uh, take a Fourier transform of that, we, we should expect that there should be a sum of different weights which are smaller than that uh, high weight uh, B. And uh, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons uh, to expect by S duality that we have uh, corrections to just uh, uh, to that highest weight. So. Uh, Yeah, so uh, we could, uh, um, in the theory for n equals 2 uh, star, uh, we could explicitly uh, find that uh, monopole space uh, uh, MB B prime using uh, construction by uh, Kronheimer, which relates uh, monopole configurations uh, in three dimensions to instantons on uh, R4, modular U1 action which rotates uh, two plane and caution those uh, instantons and gets uh, monopoles from those. The integration on the modular space of those monopole configurations is very similar to integration using fixed points on the space of instantons to, uh, to, to the work on uh, omega background uh, theories. So we get a contour integral, complicated contour integral representation uh, formulas for those uh, corrections, and uh, after we combine those with uh, the uh, contributions of instantons and one loops, the final formula takes uh, this form. So, so it's a sum over uh, weights which appear in the representation defined by the highest weight b for the Tooft operator times this absolute value square of that partition function, the omega background, times certain uh, like one loop correction coming from the integration of the model space of those point instantons with parameters b and b prime. And uh, if we compare that formula to this formula under s duality transformation, we have found that it uh, precisely uh, agrees with the results of uh, uh, these people who studied uh, observables due to, well, conjecturally due to uh, Wilson or Tooth loop operators in those uh, AGT dual Louisville or Toda uh, two dimensional CFTs. So, uh, so that's it. And uh, here are just uh, a summary and uh, discussion slide. So we've got exact results for vacuum expectation values of uh, CZ Hooft and Wilson loop operators in OSP2 slash 4 theories with uh, eight supercharges. This uh, formula, they include all perturbative and non-perturbative corrections. They agree with uh, conjecturally dual observables in uh, two-dimensional Toda or Louisville uh, CFTs by uh, AGT duality. Uh, by this agreement already, we can see that uh, the S duality is satisfied by this observable because actually it was uh, verified before in those two dimensional series, and we have a match between uh, that localization formulas and the formulas with conformal blocks and uh, 
those uh, degenerate fields moving around uh, contours in two-dimensional field theories. Uh, this, the, the connection of this work, well, it, again, I should not tell maybe, uh, I put a very small subset uh, of uh, what is connected to because it mostly has been reviewed by uh, Cyberk actually yesterday, so those are different uh, theories in various uh, spheres and observables that you can uh, put there. Um, in addition, there are emerging computations using localizations in uh, gravity theories, uh, like uh, this paper. And also, one can restrict uh, the situation to more uh, supersymmetric theory, but less supersymmetric Wilson loops, like uh, more complicated loops in equals for supersymmetric young wheels. Uh, was in uh, this work with Simona Giambia, uh, where we have localization to uh, two-dimensional uh, young wheel theory. So, thank you. Questions? Um, do you know how to also to extend the answer to the ionic loops, so to Wilson operators? It's work in progress. Uh, uh, well, we, we know some part of it, but not complete. Uh, in the computation for the one loop, you took this ratio of determinants of the fermions and the bosons? Yes. And you wrote an R inside? Yes. So what do you mean by that R? You mean the... R is the, the, the transformation Q squared. Mm -hmm. So what we have, we have the space of fields, and we treat the space of fields, well, that linearized space of fields near the supersymmetric configuration, and we treat it as a module with respect to that uh, U1 group, which comes from the R squared. So, so it's just the determinant is a product of weight on that U1 module, and we want to find those weights and those multiplicities. So, so R is just that you want action on all modes of all fields near the supersymmetric uh, background. So the form of the kinetic operators still follow from that in the Lagrangian. There's no change to that. Uh, so you just... The, 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 the kinetic... Uh, well, well, I skipped some steps, which actually how you get uh, that formula from uh, just the kinetic operator of TQV, but it's a linear algebra which, can, which shows you that the ratio of uh, bosonic and uh, fermionic fluctuations near the supersymmetric configuration can have that uh, group theoretical uh, representation, like a ratio of a product of weights in, in, in the situation when Q squares through a rotation. And the ratio of that product of weights uh, uh, on those two vector spaces is then are reduced to the ratio of the weights on smaller spaces which are kernel and co kernel of the uh, elliptic uh, transversal elliptic differential operator appearing in the equations on the smaller spaces. So, and to find that we use the uh, ATS Singer index formula. Yeah, thanks. Any further? So in your calculation of one loop uh, determinant around the single monopolis larger charges, you said usually singular monopolis has some modulus, and uh, is it because of the ome uh, omega deformation it becomes simpler? Or your one Sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. The question is about monopole yeah, contributions? Monopole contribution to one loop. Yeah, yeah. monopole contributions to, to one loop, yeah. With so larger charge, right. So again, uh, I, I, I stress that there are no smooth uh, solutions for our uh, equations cube psi zero for those complicated equations. But in the region where x goes, where the distance to the loop is very small, the equations are approximately Bogomolin equations. If we replace our equations by Bogomolin equations er, uh, around the loop, we can uh, have their, the non-abelian monopole corrections. But because it's just approximation, in the same way like we have on the point instantons contributing to the north or south pole, here we have point monopoles which uh, collapse on the equator. So the contribution is given by certain uh, fixed points on the modular space of monopoles with those parameters bb prime. 
And we can find that contribution using similar techniques like uh, uh, people used uh, in the contribution of uh, point instantons in theories with, uh, on omega backgrounds, some contra-integral formulas. Any other questions? If not, let's thank Vasily again.